Hi, I'm glad you joined me again this week uh, for another drawing lesson. I hope you're doing well in the ongoing uh, quarantine. <laughs> and uh, We certainly are here. At least we're healthy and uh, we're thanking God for that. Uh, and I know it's, you know, it's kind of challenging being isolated like this. So I'm hoping that some of these drawing lessons will give you something to do, something to practice and, and just have some fun with. Uh, this week we're going to do something that is uh, maybe a little challenging, but I hope it will uh, encourage you to try uh, this exercise uh, with uh, some other objects. We're going to draw a mushroom today. May not be very exciting, may not sound very exciting, but I think you'll have some fun with it. So uh, I don't want you to have to look at me the whole time I'm drawing um, because uh, I want you to focus on the mushroom. And so uh, I'm going to make a real quick switch here and uh, then uh, we'll start drawing a mushroom. All right, let's draw our mushroom. Now I've got a reference photo here and we want to take a quick look at it just to see what it basically looks like. And I really identify four parts here in, in this particular photo. I see the cap at the top. And if you look at it, it's kind of like a rounded off trapezoid uh, with, you know, one, two, three, four sides. Um, then we see the underside and it's got these little thin things here. And it's kind of curvy at the bottom. And then the next thing I notice is a flare underneath. I don't know what that's called, but I call it a flare because it sort of flares out. Uh, and then uh, the stalk itself is like a flower vase. It's wider at the top and wider at the bottom, and it's kind of narrow in between. So those are really the four parts that we want to focus on. We're not going to try to reproduce this exactly. What I want us to do is just get a feel for drawing uh, that basic mushroom. And so let's start out. And I just lost my brushes. Where did they go? There they are. Okay. So I'm working in a program called Autodesk Sketchbook this week. It's a great program, and the best part about it is it is free, and it works on all platforms, uh, Windows, Mac, uh, Android, you, know, you name it, it's, uh, it's there. Uh, so, uh, so it's worth uh, looking into if you're interested in doing digital art. If you're not, then uh, use whatever you have. Uh, pencil and paper works if you have charcoal uh, or pastels. Uh, I don't want you to necessarily try to make your picture look like mine, because remember, that's one of my rules. It doesn't have to look like mine. Uh, what I do want you to do is have fun and uh, try to draw a mushroom with me. Now I'm going to make my initial sketch uh, just with, I don't really need my brush properties up here. Uh, I am going to make my initial sketch with uh, a, a pencil and I'm going to draw the top first. And remember, it's kind of a trapezoidish shape. Not a true trapezoid because the, the corners aren't, there aren't corners for the most part, except maybe over here. Then I'm going to do my second, which is kind of the underside. You're not always going to see the underside, but in this case we do. I'm just going to make that line kind of curvy and scraggly and taper it off right up here. And then I'm going to draw my flare, whatever that is technically called. And then I'm going to draw a curvy line that's going to get bigger at the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing here. It's going to curve in and get bigger at the bottom. And then I'm going to draw a cross line here, connecting it. And let's see if I can shrink that down a little bit so I can see where I'm going. But I want to make sure that line continues on out. Okay, there is my basic mushroom. Uh, not very exciting necessarily, but uh, that's the first layer. That's the initial sketch. Now, if we want to take that a step further, if uh, you want to go beyond that, then I'm going to add an extra layer. Uh, in digital art, you 
can it's kind of like lay, laying a transparency over top of the the previous drawing and then you can draw on top of it and modify it and improve it uh, but um, what I want to do is I want to strengthen that uh, line a little bit so I might even come in with let's see what I've got here it's way too big uh, let's make this smaller it's still too big now, if you're drawing along with me, this might be a, a marker of some sort. Let me take that out so I don't have that on my paper. Might be like a Sharpie marker or something. And I'm just going to draw over those lines. And I'm not trying to be real accurate right now. And then we've got a little bit of an overhang there. I'll get rid of that. Can't do that with a Sharpie. Okay, then I'm going to do my flare. And then I'm going to come down. And darken that and I'm gonna come back through and darken my baseline a little bit and then I'm just going to turn off that bottom layer so I have this one and there's my basic mushroom now if you wanted to do some more you could come back in and I'm just gonna I'm not even gonna do a another layer here I'm just gonna draw another line and you could experiment with different kinds of mushrooms one with maybe a bigger cap or more of a circular cap I've seen them with very narrow ones I've seen some that look almost like little parachutes never seen those very narrow so you can play around and you know look at different photos of mushrooms and uh, work on those now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just real quick color this in if you're doing it with pencil or paper then what you want to do is watch your lines carefully uh, I, uh, I have a little trick that is kind of fun in digital art I can select a section and then I can go in and pretty much do my coloring and not worry about having to stay inside a line. Uh, now, if we looked at that picture closely, the photo that we were working from, the light was coming from over on in this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give us a little bit of shading, a little bit of shadow here. And then I'll come back in and darken that even a little bit more. And, and I can come in with a blender and blend that out a little bit if I want. Okay, and then I can deselect them and come down here and select this one. And then I'm going to come back in again. And I'm going to make this dark all the way across. And I'm actually going to even make that darker. And again, do this or do, do with whatever you have. Create your mushroom. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and select that little section. And I'm going to make that even darker, I think. And then I'm going to come back here, I'm going to deselect, and then select this section. And I'm going to come back up here. Actually, maybe even come up here. 
and go with much lighter feel all the way across. And then come back in and again. I kind of give a little bit more shadow there. And let's see. What I want to do is come back up here. I want to reselect up in here. Now you notice this time it's selecting just that white area. What I want to do is I don't want that to be quite such a stark white, so I'm going to come in, make that a little bit lighter, or a little bit darker, rather. And then I'll deselect, and I'm going to use my blender. Kind of smear that a little bit. And you can go on and on. I actually blended a little too much there. If I want to add those fins in, I want a really narrow line. So, you know, I might come in here and add some little lines like that, just in different places. Now, if I wanted to add some color, I might come back in. If you were doing this on your own, you might want to come in with some colored pencils and add a little bit of shading, a little bit of color. Uh, for that, I would do the same thing I've done before, but uh, I would probably just cheat and use, let's see, let's make that a little bit bigger. I would use an airbrush tool. But you could do this with, again, crayons or colored pencils. Just to give it a little bit of color. Might come down here and select down here somewhere. Oops, haven't selected anything. There we go. <clears throat> Maybe select this and come back in with that same airbrush tool just to give it a little bit of a little bit of shading and with the selection I can actually increase what's called the tolerance which will let me come in here and select more of it so let me do that <clears throat> and that way I can kind of add some color to the whole thing and I can do the same thing down here then, in this bottom section. Okay, and let's come back in with the airbrush. And just add a little bit of color there for fun. And there's a very simple mushroom. Now, again, you can play around again with different designs like this. Look at some pictures, see what, uh, what you can find and uh, just try different things. <clears throat> but the most important thing is to have fun. And uh, I will come back next week with another drawing exercise to kind of give you some practice. And again, may remember the main exercise here is to look at something and then try to draw it from memory. Okay, so the exercise wasn't really so much about drawing mushrooms uh, or even so much about drawing techniques. It's about observing and seeing you know what it is that you're wanting to draw and then using your memory as best you can come back and try to recreate it start with something simple and uh, see what you can do uh, we did a cherry a couple weeks ago you might want to try that try simple shapes simple objects look at them observe them and then draw them from memory and uh, you'll be surprised at what you might find that you can do. Uh, next week, I'll be back with something else. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the things on the activity page today, uh, and we'll see you next week.